Welcome, and today I wanna to share with you guys my six favorite photos of 2022 thus far, the photographic techniques used to capture them, the struggles that I had, and the things that you can apply the next time you're out in the field to get similar results or just practice your guys' photographic technique and grow your photography skills. The first photo I wanna take a look at is of these three great horned owlets. Now, why I love this photo is just because one, they're adorable and they're just peeking out over each other. So you have the balance between the, the three of them, the symmetry between the three of them, and they're all just like hidden in this little nook. Now for this photo, the one technique I really wanna talk about is composition and shapes. So you have the diagonal line cutting through the photo and you have the uh, almost a diagonal line between the leaves, leaf starting here and ending up here, the diagonal line between the owls themselves. So you just have these repeating patterns and shapes throughout the entire image. And then of course you have the little bit of green, which is uh, contrasting with the reddish brownish and yellow in the owls and in the tree itself. And I just really like how this photo overall is a really balanced image and all three of them are interacting in the same way wondering what i'm doing and then of course i really like this back uh the owl in the back here how his pupils are just different you know the first two almost have the same demeanor and then you just have this third one kind of popping out behind the rest of them really checking me out and seeing what's going on and I want to talk about the biggest struggle here being uh, boring compositions. Like this is the original composition here and you can see everything's dead. They of course are perfectly camouflaged with the tree itself. So you're not really, you really have to be creative in scenarios like this, which is where I highly recommend that you move around and try and find a composition that is going to not just look like a snapshot. Everybody that was there shooting these owls was shooting them head on with this same composition and all everyone's photos are gonna look the same, which is why I moved over to the left of the tree, got behind another tree so I could get this, uh, the leaves that were actually blooming on the one blooming tree there, out of focus in my foreground, creating more depth, creating more color contrast uh, between the subject and the environment. And of course, getting the, this nice diagonal line instead of just sitting here shooting them head on in this little V tree trunk area right here. Now the second photo I wanna talk about has to do with using space and symmetry and direction. So utilizing uh, the animal to create a composition that creates movement, balance, symmetry, and again, utilizing negative space. Now let me show you what I mean. So this eagle, fill in the frame, so going from wingtip to wingtip on a diagonal. And then of course, uh, the movement, him flying or looking where he's going. So you could tell he's hunting. If you uh, study bald eagles, they will hunt their prey from the side like this, never taking their eyes off of it, and they circle around. So with this image, I wanted it like this because one, you have the uh, contrast in lighting between the sun coming in, hitting its left wing, illuminating the left side of the eagle's face, and then the right side of the eagle being slightly darker and as well as the sky being more shaded and darker as well. Of course, I illuminated this in post so to emphasize that lighting, but when it comes to negative space, my biggest struggle was shooting at midday. I was shooting this, it was probably close to noon and as most photographers know, that is not the greatest lighting uh, or the greatest time to actually get good lighting because the sun's up above, you generally have harsh shadows. So if the eagle's just flying like this, it's just gonna illuminate the top of the eagle and the bottom of the eagle where its face and all the feathers and all the detail is, is gonna be darkened and it's just gonna be a bad image. That's why I like this particular image because the eagle had turned to its side where the sun was, uh, where it, uh, the way it was positioned the eagle was be allowed to be illuminated by the sun, getting all that detail, and it was still looking and hunting, allowing its face to be illuminated. And because it was so bright out, I was able to darken the image and get this nice, almost dark blue sky instead of the bright white or uh, sky blue um, 
like pastel-y blue sky that you would normally get on a day where there's no clouds. A lot of people struggle with shooting later on in the day because everyone wants the nice golden hour lighting, but I challenge you to go out there and try and capture shots in midday. See how, how patient you are with who your subject is and see what you can capture to utilize that light to your advantage. I was not planning on shooting equals like this, but I didn't want to leave. They were being super active and I just kept moving around where, uh, where they were fishing at and ended up getting a really nice shot. And it's my favorite shot of all the eagles that I shot that day. And it's one of my favorites for this year uh, thus far, obviously. So the reason I picked this next photo is because of the complementary colors that are in this photo. Shooting with complementary colors just proves or makes for a more aesthetically pleasing photo when you look at it uh, because you have different colors on the color spectrum from different sizes. And I'll show you guys examples of that here in a second uh, by what I mean and a good tool uh, to use to extract colors from your photos as well. So let's take a look at the photos. So the fox here, and I really like this photo because one, the fox looks absolutely adorable. Sitting there, uh, tail curled up, looking at me, the lights hitting it just nice enough where you can see the catch lights in the eyes and the eyes are illuminated. And then of course it's sitting in this bed of small wildflowers. And this is where I wanted to talk about complementary colors. So you have green and the complementary color to green is red and we have the red in the background here and then we have the bluish purple colors which are complementary to orange and same thing with this fox photo we have this beautiful reddish orange fox sitting in a field of green so it's simple in contrast really nicely the fox stands out against the green because red and orange are dominant colors meaning that your eye naturally gravitates towards them right off the rip. If you have a, a white piece of paper with just a small red dot on it, you will look at that red dot instantaneously. So having a green background and a red subject in the middle of the photo, you're gonna take in all the detail and look that fox over, looking at its eyes, its whiskers, the detail of its fur. This is where utilizing complementary colors really makes for a photo to stand out and that's why these photos are my favorite. But let me show you what I mean more with complementary colors. If I go to color.adobe.com and I extract the theme from these colors, so I upload the photo and you can see on this first photo, it picks out the five main colors. And then when you go to color wheel, you can see almost directly across from each other, you have this color, this like darker red, this more muted, uh, desaturated red with this muted desaturated blue and then this more brownish uh, reddish orange right across from this dark blue and that is what I mean by complementary colors and then for the second photo we can see all the different greens and all the different reds and then right on the color wheel we have the greens and right across from them we have the reds. That's enough about complementary colors. Let's talk about what I struggled with when it came to actually shooting these fox. Now, fox are pretty skittish to begin with, so you want them to get comfortable with you kind of being there. So I move really slow. I get all my gear out. I'm generally really quiet because loud noises will spook them. And I don't want them obviously running away because I'm trying to photograph them. So once my tripod is set up and my camera's attached to my tripod, I will slowly and very low to the ground kind of move around and uh, see a good composition for shooting them. Once I'm about 20, 30, 40, 50 yards away, uh, generally foxes are very curious, so they'll actually get up and move towards me, which is why I can get such close shots of them, uh, even though these are cropped to a degree. You want to have the patience to compose a good shot. For this photo of the fox laying in the wildflower bed here, the area where I was shooting was not littered with these wildflowers. There was very sparse parts off the side of the road where I was photographing the fox along the forest edge where these flowers were. So I had to sit there and kind of keep moving back. The fox would get curious, move closer to me, and then once it actually laid down in the bed of flowers, that's when I sat there very patiently with my eye on the viewfinder and started taking photos. Coming off of talking about complementary colors, 
What's complimentary to this video is pressing the like button. So if you guys are enjoying watching this, please do consider giving that like button a press as it does help support this channel, support this video, uh, the work that I'm doing, and it's greatly appreciated. And if you feel like going above and beyond just pressing the like button, head to the description below where there's an actual link and you can actually donate to this channel to help it grow, help support the work that I'm doing here and the work that I do out in the field to bring these videos to you guys. And that in itself is of course appreciated. I'm even using a new studio light that was donated uh, through you guys here, leaving tips and I was able to get a better studio light than the $70 one I got off of Amazon like five years ago. So thank you so much. Now let's get back to the photos. Now for this photo, we're gonna be talking about lighting and not just shooting at golden hour, but how you can utilize golden hour to make your photos come to life. In this photo, we have a barred owl now I was photographing this owl and another one for about four hours. And why I love this photo so much is because it is the only time that the owl turned towards the sun and why that makes this photo look so unique and so different and so alive is because you have the beautiful catch lights in its dark, dark eyes, creating this beautiful contrast and dimension between all of its feathers and its beak. And then of course the catch lights in its eyes as well as the branch that it's sitting on, even on its talons down here, all the detail, all the highlights. I love this photo because it just hops out. It stands out at you. And honestly, looking at this makes me feel like I'm there again. So the biggest struggle that I had when photographing owls or this owl or any owl is again, patience. Owls are very still. So knowing when they hunt, again, watching their mannerisms, now I spent 10 days with an owl or 10 hours with an owl once and the owl did absolutely nothing for that entire 10 hours. It just slept. Now it was going between rain, snow and sleet. So I doubt it wanted to be moving around too much. Uh, this was a nice sunny day or a pretty early late morning. It was about 8.30, 9 o'clock. So a couple hours after the sun had already come up and I was photographing it until about one o'clock in the afternoon, but it was prime weather to actually go hunt for this owl. So right below it was a little channel of water and the owl was looking for crayfish and eating grasshoppers. So it was constantly moving around. It was a very active owl flying towards me, uh, landing in front of me, flying over me. So it allowed me the opportunity to kind of bounce around uh, and get a lot of different compositions. So when shooting an owl like this, that's, that is moving around uh, frequently enough, you have to be ready to move, which is one struggle, because the second I would get a composition and wait for it to fly, wait for it to do something, you know, I would be changing my settings to adjust uh, for the exposure and then it would fly away. Luckily for this photo, it sat there for quite a while, maybe 15 minutes, and during those times, you have to keep your eye on the viewfinder or if you're shooting from the LCD screen, keep your eye on the LCD screen with your finger on the shutter button and be patient. The only way you're gonna get these shots is patience because if I was not looking at, my, at the owl through my viewfinder, I would have missed this because it was a quick turn and then it went back and actually flew away. So I sat there, looked through the viewfinder, finger on the shutter button, the second I saw it look up, because I wanted it to look up, I ripped that shutter, got the shot, and then of course I was, I like jumped up nice and quietly because there was an, uh, two other photographers there shooting it with me. And I was trying to still be really quiet, but I was, I was so excited to actually get this shot because I knew, I knew that I nailed it. I knew I nailed focus. I knew that I had got the perfect lighting and I knew exactly where it was looking and how I was gonna edit this image um, just by looking at the scene. And that is where you have to be patient so that you can get the shots that you're just that excited about. Now, the last photo I wanna talk about has to do with composition or compositional movement in an image, as well as utilizing uh, layers in your image that are in the environment, just looking for uh, things that are symmetrical or help with framing. So let's take a look at the last photo. So I love this photo here because of the vertical lines 
You have the flower bed here, which creates separation between this, the ground right here. So you have a line, a line, another line, the uh, tree line, the branches, all, everything's kind of going in the same direction. And that is all the uh, symmetrical things that I enjoy about this photo. Even the elk is on the same plane as everything else and the movement of the ground and the unevenness of the ground even matches almost the the shoulder blades and the the spine of the elk's back here everything's moving about the photo the same way and then of course i shot the elk with this negative space here because the elk was moving in that direction turned and looked at me and i wanted to leave this space because i wanted it to seem like the elk was on the move allowing breathing room between this massive animal and the rest of the environment and also giving the viewer the opportunity to see what the rest of the environment looks like. Another compositional thing was I positioned myself where uh, the head of the elk was almost in this darker area because you could see how the light was actually cutting through the trees up here and illuminating the tree trunk behind the elk here and how where even the sun was positioned because of how the elk is lit up and the way that the shadows are falling on the elk. So I put myself in a position where it would be darker behind the elks, allowing him to stand out more. Luckily for me, again, my eye on the viewfinder and just wait and finger on the trigger, he was chewing, looked up at me, made this face, and I got the shot. And you got these little, little flies flying around him here and here and here and then of course the grass in his mouth and of course the, sh the photo is just tack sharp and I could not be happier with it. Now that you've seen these photos let me know which one in the comments below is your favorite photo and if you want to learn how to edit photos this way you can watch this video next and learn how to make your images stand out.